friends, how's it going? Happy Monday. I hope that you are doing awesome and that your week is off to a great start. Today, I want to talk a little bit about food guilt. So this is a topic that's come up a lot in my closed Facebook groups with my one-on-one -on -one clients and honestly, in my own life as well. So I did a lot of thinking and I've come up with a system that is going to help you stop feeling guilty about the things that you're eating when it is negative and use food guilt as a source of data in your life so that you can improve your relationship with food, get more consistent and stop thinking about it all the time. When it comes down to it, I don't think that food guilt is all bad. However, it does make us feel pretty crappy in the moment. So I want to teach you how to handle those feelings so that you can be more consistent when it comes to your nutrition. So we're going to talk through my exclusive three, two, one framework and how to implement it if you start feeling food guilt. Let's be real. This is a super, super common sentiment over the holiday season. We go to holiday parties. We overdo it at happy hours with our teammates. We have one too many cookies hanging out with our family. I get it. I went to my own holiday party on Saturday and I definitely was not expecting to have half of a chocolate sorbet sundae. I wasn't. This wasn't something that I planned. This was not necessarily even the most conscious indulgence that I could have made in the moment, but it happened. And by Sunday morning, I was feeling a tad bit guilty. And so I implemented this framework that I'm going to share with you so that you can use it anytime that you're feeling food guilt. Now, the first thing I want to say is that food guilt is not necessarily a bad thing because it is a source of data. It is going to teach us a little bit more about our relationship with food so that we can uncover the underlying beliefs and behaviors that are triggering that food guilt so that we can understand them, interrupt them, and improve our relationship with food. So I hope that that's helpful, um, but I'm just gonna walk you through this. I haven't taught this concept before, so you'll have to bear with me. I'm a little nervous going into it, um, but I'm really excited because I finally was able to kind of distill down everything that I've been doing to handle food guilt, and I'm really excited to share this with you, even though I'm a little nervous. So this is the first time that I'm teaching it, so you'll have to just bear with me. I'm gonna be taking a look at my notes and all of that good stuff. So this system, this framework, Framework, as I've mentioned, is compiled uh, off of the hours and hours of coaching that I've done with women over the last 18 months when it comes to their nutrition and helping them get a little bit more consistent. So these topics I have worked many times with clients on, but I haven't necessarily compiled them into a framework until now. So I'm super excited to share that with you. So go ahead, get out your pens, get out your paper, get out your note, your the notes app on your phone to take down this framework. And I'm probably going to write about it in the future, but wanted to share it with you first. So the first part of the three, two, one framework is the three. And this is what I want you to do immediately when you begin to feel guilty about something that you're eating. And I want you to ask yourself why three times. So three times why is to dig a little bit past the surface level of your reaction. So the first time you're normally going to be asking yourself like, okay, self, why do I feel guilty in this moment? When you answer that question, I want you to probe a little bit deeper. So as I mentioned, I had a bit of a chocolate sorbet sundae on Saturday night at my holiday party that I wasn't expecting to and felt a little bit guilty. So for me, it would look a little bit like, why do I feel guilty about eating the chocolate sorbet? Well, I had already had a couple of cocktails and a glass of wine at that point, and I feel like I shouldn't have indulged further. I would probe that even deeper to start getting more towards the bottom of the root feeling that I was dealing with, right? So the next question would be, well, why do I feel like I shouldn't indulge further? And for me, the answer there is where things start to get sticky because by just asking why twice, I'm able to recognize that in my food guilt in this moment is still someone who struggles a little bit with some of my eating disorder tendencies, right? So I'm hearing that I shouldn't indulge. So why shouldn't I indulge? Well, the answer that I immediately come back to is, well, I'm gonna gain weight. 
I'm going to get fat. And for me, once I ask that question, usually it's around three times, sometimes it's two, sometimes it's four, but by asking it three times, I'm able to really get down to the root of it because then I'm able to look myself in the mirror and say, oh my goodness, that is ridiculous. There is no logic behind what I am thinking. There is no scientific merit. There is no reason for me to have this thought because one eating decision is not going to make your body shape change. So for me, that is the first piece of the 321 framework is asking yourself why three times to get down to the bottom of why you're feeling the way that you are. So I hope that that's helpful. It's going to be a little uncomfortable. You're going to be asking yourself and answering questions that you probably would prefer to shove under the rug. I get it. Um, I did that for a long time. But in order to really improve our relationship and change the way that our, our minds process the thoughts around food, we've got to ask the tough questions. Next, let's move into two. So we've talked about three. Ask yourself why three times. Let's talk about two, which is find two reasons to be compassionate and gentle with yourself. This, with most of us, tends to be even harder than number one because food guilt sends us into this downward spiral where we are berating ourselves, talking down to ourselves, and making ourselves feel bad for one little decision, usually. So instead of getting on this negative train, spinning out of control, and focusing so much on the negative, I want you to take time to consciously think of two reasons you should be compassionate with yourself. Because again, food guilt is just data. It's just helping us under, it's helping us uncover the beliefs that we have around food that are making us miserable. So for me and my chocolate sorbet, right, I still struggle with that immediate gut reaction belief that, oh my gosh, if I eat foods that I'm not supposed to, supposed to there's another one, right, I'm supposed to eat certain foods, then I'm going to get fat. So I need to have compassion for myself as this comes up and use it to help me understand my relationship with food just a little bit more. So in my case, right, what are some reasons that I would want to be compassionate towards myself? Well, I dealt with an eating disorder for 13 years. Those paths in my brain are so damn wired, it's going to take me a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of really being conscious of my thoughts and behaviors to get past it. Another reason is it was just one choice and I got back on track the next morning. When I got up on Saturday, I had some turkey meatballs with like leftover turkey meatballs and some veggies and then I had a big ass salad with some chicken and then I had my dinner and my Lenny and Larry's cookie. Right back on track. There's no reason for me to be unkind to myself for making a decision in the moment that brought me joy and peace. So if you struggle with that, my favorite tip is think about what you would say to your best friend, to your sister, to your mom, if she came to you having these same feelings of guilt. You would probably be a lot sweeter to her than you are to yourself. So instead, turn that around and give yourself the compassion. The one in three, two, one, is spend one minute thinking and planning consciously about how you want to handle that situation next time. So a lot of the time when we make decisions around food that leave us feeling guilty, we believe it's a spur of the moment thing. We believe that it was just all of a sudden you had this craving and you gave in and you ate too much or all of a sudden you were out at happy hour and you went from planning to have one glass of wine to needing to call an Uber home. Instead, what I want you to do with this last piece of the system is take a minute, time yourself, I don't care, take one minute to game plan what you should do next time or what you would like to do next time. When we have a plan in place, we are so much less likely to slip into behaviors that we're going to feel bad about in the future. So spend a minute coming up with that game plan so that you can be better prepared in the future. It doesn't need to be elaborate. It doesn't need to do anything around that. But what I want you to do specifically is just figure out how you want to deal with that situation in the future. If you are prepared, you are not going to struggle as much, and that is going to help you stop feeling guilty.
So to recap my exclusive three, two, one framework to stop feeling guilty about what you eat. One, or I guess three, ask yourself why three times to get to the bottom of why you're feeling the way you're feeling. Two, come up with two reasons to be gentle, compassionate, and loving with yourself in this moment. So in a sense, you're looking inwards. And one, spend one minute coming up with a game plan to handle the situation differently in the future. So we're looking inward and then we're looking forward. There's no reason for us to look back, to beat ourselves up, to question ourselves. Using these three steps, you can stop dealing with food guilt in a negative way and use it as a source of data to help you get way more consistent with your nutrition. So I hope this helps. I'm going to be talking a little bit more about food guilt, handling it, personal situations with it, especially over the last week um, with my email tribe later on this week. So get on the list if you want. Otherwise, go ahead and watch this video from the beginning, learn this whole framework, and give me feedback. So I want to write this up. I want to start creating a little bit more content around this concept because I think it's really important during the holidays, but I need your help. So let me know your thoughts on this framework. Let me know if you are still struggling with food guilt because if you are and if it's making you feel small, you are using food guilt in the wrong way. Instead, I want you to use it as a source of data to improve your relationship with food and help you get more consistent. So have a great rest of your night. I can't wait to talk with you soon. And send me a DM and let me know what you think of this framework. So have a great night.